the history of man's existence on Earth continues to remain a puzzle for many. While several tales about how we came to be here have existed along religious and cultural lines for several millennia, it was not until science began probing into the matter that humanity truly began to seek empirical proof for their existence. Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this part three of the greatest mystery of our time, the dawning theory that humans may not have come from Earth, I will be sharing with you more on the possibility that we, or life as we know it to be on Earth, may have originated from somewhere outside our dear Earth. Before we proceed, please subscribe to this channel and click on the notification button to stay updated on new video drops. You can also watch previous parts of this series on the channel. Over the past few centuries, discoveries of bone fossils dating back many thousands of years have, for the most part, pointed to Africa as the place where we all originated. While the world of science seems to unanimously agree on this, there remains a lingering doubt that we may have had our origin elsewhere. And where might that be? Space. So, if humans come from space, how could that be? To begin with, several theories have been put forward to answer the possibility of humans arriving from Mars or elsewhere in the galaxy. However, it is left to determine how they evolved in the first place from those places. To provide an insight into that, let us consider the two most important molecules in human life, DNA and RNA. What if I told you that the two most essential building blocks of life could have originated in space? What if the grand design began somewhere distant from our world? That's right, scientists have been intrigued by the notion that the building blocks of life evolved from space since the discovery of organic molecules in the Merkisian meteorite that crashed into Australia in 1969. New studies are giving insight into how these molecules may have developed and arrived on Earth. To help us better understand, let us consider the information below. To start with, DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA, ribonucleic acid, are two main types of nucleic acids made from nucleotides. They are two of the most significant molecules in cell biology. DNA and RNA are in charge of storing and decoding the genetic data that underlies all life. While DNA encodes the cell's operations, RNA translates that code into proteins that perform cellular functions. Without them, the body would not function as we know it. But what do these have to do with space? Well. A NASA astrophysicist and planetary scientist at the University of Chicago, on one hand, and an astronomer from the Baltimore Space Telescope Science Institute, and a NASA Sagan Fellow from the University of Colorado, on the other, seem to have the answers that we need. Any study Fred Siesla, a planetary scientist at the University of Chicago, and Scott Sanford, a NASA astrophysicist, look into the possibility of life starting from the solar nebula, which began as a spinning disk of material in space. Both posit that our solar system had already begun the process of producing life long before Earth existed. To elaborate, the researchers created a computer version of the solar nebula, from which the sun and the planets around it were produced some 4.6 billion years ago, following a condensation. This dense, gaseous cloud may have collapsed after the explosion of a nearby star, which sent out shock waves. Ice grains comprising carbon dioxide, ammonia, frozen water, and other elements and compounds were among the primeval debris. Siesla and Sanford recreated the motions of 5,000 ice grains in the turbulence of the solar nebula over a million years ago. This spun them around, volleying some high enough that they were exposed to the radiation of the young sun. 
molecular bonds were broken by high energy ultraviolet radiation. This created extremely reactive atoms that were recombined to form more stable compounds. Occasionally, however, some of the resulting compounds were more complex. This mechanism, the scientists believe, might have produced organic molecules including amphiphiles, amino acids, and nucleobases. These are the building blocks of DNA, RNA, cell membranes, and proteins. As years rolled by, several of these organic molecules made their way to the early solar system's teeny rocky bodies, known as planetesimals. Planets, including Earth, asteroids, and comets, were formed as a result of the coalescing that took place. Consequently, our planet in its early days was loaded with organic molecules produced in space. Siesla theorized that other organic molecules might have evolved later in Earth's primordial soup, an aqueous system from which some believe the first life forms emerged. Others may have arrived in our world through extraterrestrial delivery, or by endogenous inorganic synthesis from comets and meteorites. Pause to think about it. Are we the first and only humanoids to ever exist? Several theories have posited that humans may not be the only ones of their kind after all. For years, scientists have investigated this possibility. It is, however, not until we meet these distant cousins that we may never know whether their existence is real or a hoax. Whatever the case may be, the belief that humans may have come from distant planets continues to grow among scientists. According to experts, there seems to be a lost or hidden planet in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. This raises questions like, is the asteroid belt the result of a planet bursting and an ancient civilization fleeing to Earth? Could we be descended from an extraterrestrial race that once inhabited another world? Could any of those extraterrestrials still be among us, unnoticed or hidden? Dr. Ellis Silver is among the foremost scientists who support this theory. In his book, Humans Are Not From Earth, A Scientific Evaluation of the Evidence, the ecologist and environmentalist theorize that humans may have been a product of an experiment and put here by aliens many thousands of years ago. The author suggests that man's homeworld might be somewhere in Alpha Centauri, a system of stars and planets closest to our solar system. Silver believes that a devastating tragedy may have occurred in this system. This may have led a few survivors to flee and reach Earth. The notion that humans aren't from this planet is not peculiar to science alone. In fact, several civilizations and ethnicities have told stories of contact with extraterrestrial visitors long ago. These stories, so well preserved, have been handed down from generation to generation. For these peoples, legends claim that their forefathers arrived on Earth from distant stars. One such people is the Dogon. So, what do they say? And what can be gleaned from their stories to help scientists learn more about our true origins? The Dogon people are a West African ethnic group indigenous to Mali's Central Plateau region. Among these people is a belief that the star Sirius is where their progenitors originated from before coming to Earth. The people are well known for their knowledge of the Sirius system, which is thought to have begun around 3200 BC, long before scientists discovered the star system in 1862. The Dogon acknowledge their association with alien beings that visited Earth thousands of years ago. They say that hideous amphibious aliens from the Sirius system, called the Nomos, landed on Earth in the appearance of mermen and mermaids in an arc-shaped structure. These Nomos, they say, first inhabited a planet in the Sirius system, which is believed to have circled other stars in the system. It is further stated by the people that the Nomos taught them about their home system and our solar system. 
According to researchers Marcel Graal and Germaine Dieterlin, who worked with the group from around 1937, the people held several pieces of astronomical information that could not be obtained from naked eye observation. So strong was their knowledge of space that the Dogon knew that all planets orbit the Sun. They could tell how many moons orbit the planet Jupiter, including knowledge of the planet's four large moons and the number of Saturn's rings. Another piece of information is that the Dogon knew about the shape of Sirius B, the much dimmer companion of the brighter Sirius A. The group believes that Sirius B elliptically orbits its brighter companion for a period of 50 years. The researchers also wrote that the importance attached to the distant star is at the center of many cultural practices and activities of the people. If true, the Dogon story could hold great promise to help researchers find out if humans are truly from somewhere in space. If you've watched this video till this point, then I do not doubt that you've enjoyed the fascinating knowledge I've shared with you. But hey, there's more to come. In part four of this series, I will share with you what another ethnic group in South America has to say about how humans came to Earth. That won't be all, as there's more to come. If you loved the video, please like, share, and join the conversation by dropping your thoughts in the comments section. Also subscribe to this channel by clicking the red subscription button. And don't forget to turn on your notifications for more amazing videos like this one.